Uh, yeah, so welcome. Thanks everybody for uh, hanging on to the to, on the call to uh, to talk a little bit about uh, Caliper and maybe its relationship to uh, uh, to XAPI and for possible futures. Uh, what I thought I would do um, just initially is um, I had a, there, there were a set of questions posed to me yesterday. Um, those um, those I believe are in the in the notes. Um, I mm -hmm. just provided very very quick terse answers. Um, perhaps not, uh, uh, perhaps insufficient. Uh, but what I, was, what I was hoping to do today was very briefly just uh, describe uh, um, uh, what we're doing in Caliper. And then I'd really like to, to turn the, the, the remainder of the meeting into a conversation between um, uh, those, who, uh, those who've been working on Caliper and of course those who have an interest in XAPI uh, around uh, some, of the, some of the issues that uh, have, um, emerge relative to the two specifications and of course um, conversations and talk that have occurred in the past relative to the notion of convergence uh, whether or not that's uh, that's something that's even um, attainable there are various uh, opinions on that and even if it's not if there are um, areas in which we um, as two uh, communities who have an interest in uh, describing learning activities and doing it in a standardized way. Uh, if there are ways that we, um, um, we can at least keep in touch and share information, if not uh, collaborate in different ways. Uh, so what the first thing I wanted to do was just to, to um, uh, let you guys know that uh, all of the Caliper uh, repos that are in GitHub are now public. Uh, up until a week ago, um, the what we called our canonical repos where we did all our work uh, were behind a curtain. They were all private repos. Uh, they were only available to IMS uh, contributing members. Uh, they have um, in the main, um, we have uh, pulled back the curtain and they are now visible. So you should be able to um, surf to, um, uh, to uh, the IMS global organization uh, on GitHub and you can um, retrieve uh, and have a look at and fork uh, and clone to your local desktop any of these repositories. Uh, with the exception of the, uh, we have a certification service that IMS maintains that, um, there's two repos associated with that. Those will remain private. I think I actually didn't include here, we have a JSON schema also repo that uh, uh, is, is hidden at the moment, but uh, we just need to do some review on that. And then the curtain will be pulled back on that one as well. Uh, and so, um, you know, we've got uh, spec and guide ontology related repositories. Uh, we provide a number of, uh, of uh, reference implementations, uh, what we call sensors, or they're very small libraries that, uh, that, Previously, our, our members and adopters can use um, to uh, sort of like wind up into their applications. Um, they do kind of do the heavy lifting of, uh, of converting uh, data into a caliperized format. Uh, we, of course, uh, we'll talk about this more in a little bit more detail. Uh, our data exchange format is uh, JSON LD. Uh, so we um, have provide a, an IMS caliper JSON LD context, a remote context doc that it gets referenced within events. Um, and of course, we have a whole set of common fixtures uh, that we use for testing. But actually, those are useful from the standpoint if you want to um, understand a little bit more about uh, what a caliper document looks like as expressed as JSON LD. You can, for example take a look at um, all our fixtures uh, and we have um, examples of, of many of the caliper events and you can so you can go and take a look at, at how we uh, uh, describe um, and express um, in this particular case a, a graded event um, as JSON LD. So those those re repositories there partly for testing but they also serve a, a didactic purpose as well. Uh, we also have a, um, a cross-cutting, what we call our server sort of cross-cutting issues tracking uh, repo that's called Caliper Central. Uh, so if you want to follow um, you know, um, our backlog, um, you're more than welcome to do so. Now, one, um, uh, one restriction that still exists while the repos are now visible uh, and you can easily get to them 
and and you can you can post issues, you can provide feedback, uh, et cetera. We still, at this point in time, will only accept um, contributions from IMS members. So, and, and IMS contributing members at that. Uh, so the uh, uh, contributions in terms of in terms of code and documents are um, are limited to uh, to IMS members. So that's one restriction that that still exists in terms of uh, in terms of our uh, of our repositories and our work. Uh, any questions about that before I move on? All right. Um, just quickly, um, in terms of governance within within the IMS community, we. We have a working group, uh, which is which I chair, a technical working group. It's composed of IMS uh, contributing members. Um, as you guys all know, IMS is a gated community, and then uh, within IMS there are um, there are actually levels of membership. Contributing members uh, are uh, um, are a, a set of members um, who uh, have the most skin in the game and in uh, the world of IMS, and they um, uh, one of their uh, one of their benefits of membership is they get to um, participate actively and determine the uh, the evolution of the various specs that that IMS stewards. Uh, so I chair that working group uh, representing the University of Michigan. Within, of course, that working group, there's a smaller group of individuals um, who you know roll up their sleeves and actively do the work. Uh, they're informally known as Team Caliper. Uh, Victor Haig, who I believe is on the call or has been on the call, is a, is a member of Team Caliper. Uh, and so am I. We also have a second um, uh, body, which is called uh, uh, the PSC or the Product Steering Committee. Uh, that's also composed of, of contributing members uh, who um, have leadership uh, responsibilities within their various organizations. So it's again composed of uh, university representatives as well as ed tech company representatives, and they help. Uh, they augment the working group activities by providing. Uh, uh, a, um, you could say a, a, um, a group of people who um, look at uh, the market as well as sort of look to the horizon to see um, where um, we ought to be orienting uh, our work as we go forward. So that's, uh, that's how we, um, we govern uh, the, the project. I thought just um, very briefly, I'll also, um, let's jump here, let's jump to this and describe the model in very abstract terms, just so that you get a sense uh, if you do go and you read the specification. Uh, you know, we, we, just, we have an information model. That information model itself is comprised of, of profiles. Uh, these, these profiles are, they are um, embedded within the boundaries of the specification. Uh, so unlike the, the original XAPI, the transport spec, um, the caliper specification embeds its profiles or its controlled vocabulary within those boundaries. Uh, we do that because uh, we, uh, we feel that uh, interoperability, transport interoperability is, is insufficient um, from our perspective. Semantic interoperability is also crucial uh, so that uh, endpoints can actually um, have an understanding of the messages that they're, they're actually being sent by providers. So our profiles are embedded within the, the, uh, the boundaries of the caliper specification. The model itself is segmented into profiles. Each of the profiles are composed of events. Uh, each event is composed of uh, entities, or you could think entities are similar to uh, or akin to your activity types. So they're the objects in play. Uh, we also, each event, um, describes a, a limited um, action vocabulary. Actions are, are uh, your verbs. And then entities, of course, um, are, uh, are outfitted with, uh, with a small set of properties. Uh, it's a very minimal set so that um, various aspects of the entity can be, can be described and then serialized and passed along from, a, from an event producer to, uh, uh, to an endpoint. If you're looking at uh, a caliper event in an XAPI statement, now I haven't gone back and looked at um, XAP, the XAPI statements in, in several months. I don't think that things have changed. Uh, I think this was based on 1.0.3. Um, but as you can see over on the, uh, on the left-hand side, 
Um, you know, there are the similarities where you have that basic data structure of an actor action and object or an actor verb object. Uh, and then of course, an identifier uh, and a timestamp. Uh, so very, very similar. Uh, we do um, on the required side, in our case, we're expressing uh, caliper events um, as JSON-LD. Uh, so we have this notion of a, of a context uh, which provides an economical mechanism for mapping all of our terms to IRIs. And then over on the right-hand side are all those operation, uh, optional properties. Um, I like to kind of refer to those as, as the decoration, as decorators. In a sense, they, they, um, they, they provide all that, that contextual information which, which helps um, um, make sense of that, of that very sort of base, base statement in which you make an assertion about I did this at a particular moment in time. I'm um, trying to understand the, the motivations behind that um, is certainly helped by, uh, by providing um, various contextual information. And in our case, um, our, our, our context, um, unlike yours, um, our, our properties are top level in a sense. So for example, um, you know, the edit context or the application context, a group context. So for example, a course section or course offering, membership, uh, status and role, session, federated session. We also provide um, uh, an extension map for both the event itself and in any of the entities that are described within the boundaries of the event. So you can, you can extend entities and you can extend an event. Of course, uh, one has to be careful there because that, um, uh, is from an interoperability standpoint, it can be something of a black hole. Uh, but uh, there are times when um, when one needs to uh, extend uh, extend a caliper event. There's also another way of extending caliper, and that's that's through actually that leveraging uh, JSON LD, uh, and the context allows um, for mix-ins. So, for example, if if you think of what I mean by that is IMS provides a vocabulary. You can also yourself mix in vocabularies. Like, so for example, I could define a profile that's a University of Michigan profile, and I might introduce some new terms, perhaps a new entity, perhaps some actions that are, that are currently not described uh, within the, cal the boundaries of the caliper specification. And I can, in a sense, extend that context uh, by, um, uh, by setting the value to an array, and that array could reference both the IMS context and the Michigan context. And so there, there is another, um, another very interesting way of extending um, um, Caliper uh, and doing so in a way that, um, that provides a, an opportunity for the endpoint to, again, particularly if it implements a JSON-LD parser, uh, to understand um, the, um, the terms via their, via their particular mappings. Uh, again, just looking at the event itself, uh, what's in orange is new for, for, for Caliper 1.1. We didn't. We actually didn't have an identif an ID property for events in Caliper 1.0. We relied on the event time, uh, but we had requests for an identifier. Uh, and I won't go into the really the other properties in any detail unless people have questions. Um, it's again um, the expression of a Caliper event. Uh, its expression as JSON-LD you know, differs from uh, an XAPI statement, um, but both in effect attempt to, to, um, to describe and capture uh, much of the, of the same, same types of information. Uh, there was a question about you know, what's, what's new, what have we been doing um, of late, and then what's over the horizon. So let me just quickly get you through that. The spec is completely rewritten. We have an ontology. So we have a formal um, we have a formal description of our terms um, organized into an ontology, uh, and then we provide three, three machine-readable formats for that. Um, we've refined our use of JSON-LD. Uh, this, is, this is a very, uh, a very sort of thin um, caliper event. It's only thin because, uh, because of the, the, risk, the limitations of, uh, of viewing on a, on a slide. Um, but this, this shows you basically the minimal, a minimalist caliper event in which the um, the actor, the action, the object, event time, those are required properties uh, along with that ID, the UUID. Uh, and then of course the reference to the external caliper context which will map all those terms uh, to, their, to their proper IRIs. We've made refinements there, particularly in terms of uh, 
of um, using uh, uh, for for describing like um, our event types and actions, etc. You no longer require the long IRI. Instead, you can you can just pass message event or post it, etc. Uh, because all of the all of the mappings from uh, from, for example, the, the, the posted term or the message event term are, um, are described within the, uh, the context. Uh, let's see, what else have we done? Um, oh, yes, okay. Yeah, for 1.1, um, we've added some additional profiles. We've also made um, some minor adjustments to the existing set. So we now have a forum profile to describe discussion forums. We revised our grading profile uh, to introduce the notion of a score uh, before that, we had the notion of a result, um, but there are other I, I, IMS specs like LTI that actually um, we weren't we we didn't map ourselves to all that well, so we made some changes there. And then we've added a, a tool use profile, and then also refined what we call our basic profile, which allows one to um, to utilize any of the available caliper vocabularies to describe a, a generic um, event. So that is also um, in in a sense another sort of extension point in the model which allows one to generate a generic event using any um, caliper entity and again any any action to, to, to describe so so we have that there we've also rewritten the search service um, going on to what's next I think this is the interesting the interesting bits um, for um, for looking at what we're doing now a, a great deal of our focus at this moment in time is in the extension of the caliper vocabulary. In other words, to provide vocabulary sufficient to describe um, um, a whole set of learning activities that are, that are not yet described within the existing set of, um, of caliper profiles. Now, we have also worked out a process in which um, we are going to begin to release um, individual profile documents, so standalone profiles that extend the Caliper 1.1 spec. We're going to release those in between uh, our minor releases. Uh, the IMS uh, board has a directive that uh, requires that uh, IMS projects um, allow um, a minimum 12 months between, um, uh, between minor releases. Uh, there, there's a belief that the absorption rate uh, for these specs needs to be at least that length in time. That of course created some challenges for, for, for Caliper because there's a great demand to extend the vocabulary. Uh, and so we've worked out a compromise. So we'll be able to release um, uh, profiles um, in between those minor releases. Uh, we have, um, we've got a backlog of profiles. Uh, and uh, so we've got our, we've got two simple, very simple profiles that we've got sort of keyed up and, and uh, they'll soon be ready for release. The QTI profile is a, is a sort of a beefed up assessment profile that uh, introduces um, uh, vocabulary that you would find within the, the boundaries of the IMS QTI specification. Uh, and then as you can see, there, there are a whole variety of, of profiles that, we, um, um, that are in the backlog and are in, in various stages of, of development the, at the present time. Uh, and then these are these are a list of some of our other initiatives that we're working on in 2018. And this will, I think, will be the last slide that I that I uh, uh, show you, and then we can we can engage in some some uh, Q and A. Uh, we are switching our uh, the way that we uh, we format and then produce our documents to uh, using a W3C's uh, respect tooling. So, for example, if uh, let's see if I can show you. So here's the Cal, you know, here's the Cal perspective right here. It, uh, um, you know, not just not at all that dissimilar to to uh, if you looked at if you compared it against the XAPI spec in terms of its format. Um, we are moving. Let's see if I can bring it up. That's not it. Uh, where did I put it? Ah, here we go. Yeah. So we're going to move to um, this kind of format. So if you look at any of the W3C specifications, like for example, if you go look at the JSON LD spec. Uh, which if you haven't read, I encourage you to go have a look at. Um, this is the kind of format um, that, uh, um, the, that the W3C um, respect tooling uh, provides, and we're moving um, to adopt this. So our, uh, this, is a, this is a search profile. We, we have a tool, use prof tool launch profile coming out. Those documents will be in this format, and then, and then eventually the caliper spec itself 
um, will be, uh, and any of the, of the various guides that we produce will, will uh, all be in this, in this format going forward. Uh, so that's, uh, that's one of the big uh, changes that we're, that we're making in terms of uh, um, hopefully the improvement in terms of readability, uh, navigation, uh, et cetera. Uh, and then also, of course, you know, as you might imagine in, in specifications, there's, there's lots of boilerplate and the tooling allows us to just more or less auto generate that. Uh, so um, it's, it's pretty slick tooling if, uh, if you've not had a chance to take a look at it. Um, we're also, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, individual caliper events uh, have, um, again, they reference, they reference a, a remote JSON LD context, an IMS one that maps IRIs to, to uh, maps all these terms to their IRIs. Um, we, um, we're producing a, a set of what we call profile scope JSON LD contacts. So, uh, for example, the, the search event will reference a, a JSON LD context that is scoped for the search profile. Uh, and basically, if you take a look at it, it's really a wrapper around the 1 1 context. And then it adds the additional new terms, a search event, a query, um, a search string property, and so on. Um, we're doing that as a sort of a, a, a way of providing a very lightweight hint as to the governing profile for that particular event. Uh, so we're, we're opting for that approach right now rather than, rather than following, for example, um, the, uh, the XAPI model of providing a... Um, that XAPI profile specification, which you guys produced uh, last summer. Uh, so we're leveraging JSON-LD to provide, provide the hints, which then of course uh, our, our certification service and other validators can, um, can play off of in order to, um, to check uh, if, uh, for example, the object of the interaction is, uh, is of the right type. Uh, we're um, Sometime in the summer, um, later part of the summer, we will be releasing an implementation guide. Uh, Caliper, of course, being part of, part of uh, the IMS family of specifications, uh, the learning tools interoperability spec, uh, there's a significant rewrite of that. Um, there is, a, there is a, what we call our Caliper endpoint service spec that will, um, that will be released uh, in tandem with, with that. Uh, so that, what that does is, uh, Caliper is not dependent on any other IMS specification. So you're not required to implement any other IMS spec in order to, to utilize Caliper. On the other hand, if you do have a, um, a tool that's implemented LTI, so you, you have a tool, uh, you're either a, formerly a tool consumer, it's now known as a platform, or a tool provider, uh, you will be able to um, uh, provide uh, during, the, uh, during the course of the LTI launch, um, uh, some additional information that basically instructs the, um, the provider uh, where you want its events um, uh, to flow. So it provides some basic information. And so it's, it allows Caliper in a sense to, um, uh, to further enrich an, uh, an LTI launch by providing that basic information. Uh, we're also looking at um, certifying endpoints. We don't do that at present, um, but there is a, uh, there's an interest within the IMS community to do that. Uh, we are wrestling a little bit with um, the issue of, uh, of mapping identities across application contexts. Uh, we do find, for example, in, within the LTI scenario that in certain cases, um, uh, these third-party tools um, that are sending events back um, uh, that participate within, within an LTI context are sending like their own opaque identifiers, uh, which, uh, which the former tool consumer now platform can't understand, doesn't know how to map them to, to their provider. So we, we, we need to, at a minimum, provide some, some guidance around that. Uh, there's also um, uh, questions or interest um, in, uh, in addressing uh, data use and privacy. IMS has a privacy work group and uh, there's interest in, uh, there may, we, we may at some point in the future um, provide um, explicit hints as to how, um, as to how these events um, uh, and the data that's contained therein, how, they're, how they should be handled by an endpoint. There is interest in the query API, um, although that, that interest has, um, uh, while we have a draft 
a draft proposal in place. Um, there hasn't been any um, uh, explicit activity in that area. And then, of course, we do have interest um, from IMS members uh, for Caliper to begin to support additional transport protocols. So, for example, MQTT, uh, because H HTTP is not um, always the, uh, the appropriate protocol to, um, uh, in, uh, to send these, uh, these messages. Uh, so those are a variety of the kinds of things that, that, we're, that we are looking at. Uh, and so what I'd like to do now is like pause and just open it up to the, uh, to the floor for any questions that you may have regarding um, Caliper and its relationship with XAPI. So yeah, so it's Alan. Hi, Alan. So, hey, Anthony, nice to meet you again. Yeah. Um, so I think the uh, profile server that Megan's getting the case study on would uh, kind of bound XAPI like uh, Caliper's bound uh, because uh, the model will be in the profile server. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there's a big risk that there's duplication of uh, effort around defining certain events. So would it, wouldn't it make sense for Caliper, sorry, EMS Global and ADL Net to work on the profile server together? Um, possibly. So um, there were some um, emails um, back in, there's an email thread that's behind uh, this, um, this now public conversation. Um, Jason recently just sent an email uh, regarding his views on um, this question of convergence. Uh, and uh, it's been one that's, um, the, the words floated around for quite a while. People look at both XAPI and Calper and they see that basic data structure uh, of the, um, you know, of the sort of RDF like triple and think, well, why can't you guys just bring it all together? And there's possibly, you know, there's always a, there's always a possibility, um, but I find ourselves right now in, in what I would describe as a Nash equilibrium. Uh, but beyond that, it seems to me that it's in this burgeoning area of, of vocabularies um, where there is the possibility of, of collaboration. In other words, uh, you know, we have, you know, we've defined um, and we're in the process of defining uh, a whole variety of, of, uh, of profiles. So we've got, a, we've got an existing set right now. They're modest in terms of, you know, in terms of the, uh, the landscape covered. Uh, and, you know, probably the same can be said for the burgeoning effort um, on the XAPI side to define um, uh, profiles. Uh, looking across at our profiles uh, and then at the XAPI, there's some overlap there. And there could be the possibility of, um, of us perhaps working together to create what one might call X caliper profiles. In other words, profiles that define a common vocabulary, um, but then leave it to um, the implementer to decide how they, how they would prefer to serialize it. In other words, um, if they want to serialize it as an X API statement, do it that way. If you want to serialize it as a caliper event, do it, you know, the caliper way. Um, so that, you know, there's, there's potential possibility there. Jason Haig and I, um, several months, well, back in the, near the end of 2017, began a, began a process of mapping, um, mapping caliper terms, um, to XAPI terms. It was at that time, it was a bit challenging because, you know, while caliper vocabulary, um, you know, is defined in the boundaries of the caliper spec. Uh, XAPI vocabulary, um, vocabulary terms, uh, in general, um, they're all, they're all over the internet. You just search around and, and, and find them. Uh, they are with, with the advent, at least as I read it, of the profile of the XAPI profile effort. Um, that's pulling, um, you know, that's pulling that vocabulary together in a more, in a more defined and arguably opinionated way. Uh, and that could allow us, um, to, um, you know, at a minimum, maybe establish same as relationships between terms, uh, or maybe even, you know, move in a direction where we start using the same term mappings um, across the, um, the two efforts. So that sounds uh, like the way to go, uh, be it in, uh, uh, it has to be a kind of neutral curated space. Uh, yes. so the... Yeah, and that's a challenge actually. Because if you, for example, let's see, let's see if I can just quickly bring it up. Because th this raises the, this raises the the one of one of just like a, a really simple. Um, let's see. Oh, great. 
oops, sorry. Um, hold on here. Uh, ha, ha, where is my, uh, there it is. Okay. So um, what you're going to look at, and hopefully you can see it, um, is, uh, where did it go? Where did my contacts go? Uh, ha, 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 ha. Ah, now I can't see it. Damn it. All right. Um, ah, here we go. Um, B1, P1. Oops. Sorry. Just a second. B1, P1. And let's just look at the, this guy. Okay. Sorry about that. This is IntelliJ um, behaving differently. So here, here is a, um, what you're looking at right now is a, the IMS Global JSON-LD context. And what this attempts to do is to map all terms within, within the realm of Caliper, so everything that we define, um, to, uh, to an IRI mapping. And as you can see, you know, Alan talked about a neutral space. Well, this by, you know, isn't neutral in the sense of all these terms um, are mapped to a, a persistent namespace caliper URL, right? And then if you go look at the XAPI profile IRIs, well, you have some IRIs that, that um, for uh, verbs that, for example, are pulled from, or, or I should say originate from like the version one activity streams, which I think many of those terms have actually been since deprecated by uh, uh, later releases of uh, the activity stream spec. But whatever the case, you have a, you've got terms um, that, um, you know, that are namespaced in certain ways. You might even say, go so far as to say they're branded and that may, um, you know, rub up against the sensibilities of, of, uh, of, of certain people as regards, well, if we were going to try and, and uh, um, see if we can work with um, a common set of terms, um, what would we, what URL would we, or URI or IRI would we map them to? I mean, th this is just, a, just in some ways a small example, but not an insignificant one of some of the, the challenges uh, that, uh, you know, that we might experience uh, in attempting to, um, you know, work closer together. I mean, you know, one response for me would be, well, you know, look, we have, we have a set, a well-defined set of terms. Why don't you guys just adopt them, right? And then you'd say, well, I don't know if I want to do that because that may place a dependency, you know, from my community to the IMS community. Maybe I don't want that, right? So, you know, we've got those kinds of challenges. Um, and that's just one minor example. Other questions? Although it's at one o'clock now, so I think we're running out of time. Yeah, you have way too interesting, Anthony. I could ask you a hundred questions, but it's not fair on the people. Well, here. I can do this. I mean, look, I'm happy to call back in next week if you want to keep the conversation going. Um, if you want to, you know, if you want to pose more questions. Um, I myself, um, just to say, it seems to me that if there is one area where there's a potential, um, a potential exercise that we could take, that's like crosswalking the two specs from a vocabulary standpoint. Um, I think it's becoming, it's it, arguably, it's pretty easy on the caliper side. Um, but I think it might be becoming easier from the, from the, uh, the XAPI side, given the, the advent of, uh, of the um, you know, explicitly defined um, XAPI profiles. And so there possibly there. For example, there's you, you guys have a video profile. There's a video profile there. We have a media profile. Uh, yeah, so there's video. We have a media profile. There's potential overlap there. We are interested in, um, in as one of the profiles that we plan on um, uh, producing is uh, it's an open badges related um, profile. Of course, open badges is now part of um, part of the IMS family of, uh, of specifications. Um, so there's, you know, there's overlap there. Uh, but there's, um, you know, and then, then there's opportunities for, for potential opportunities for XAPI to perhaps leverage existing caliper vocabularies um, that uh, may prove of use within the XAPI universe. They've already, in a sense, been defined. So, uh, 
you know, it seems to me that there, there's a possibility there. That, that leaves us from, you know, arguing about whether, you know, one transport is superior to another or one data, data interchange formats better than another or, you know, et cetera. Although I do have questions about like, are you guys, um, are you guys just thinking about adopting JSON LV, for example? Uh, what kind of what kind of changes do you anticipate? So, anyways, it's two minutes after the hour. I could talk for hours, um, but I don't think people want to hang out on the on the phone for that long. I am happy to come back uh, on a follow up call and talk more about Caliper, or if um, uh, people have um, a set of questions beyond what I attempted to, to answer off the email. Um, I'm happy to, um, to, uh, to attempt to answer them. Uh, just do remember that I do not work for IMS. I work for the University of Michigan. And so any, any opinions that I'm expressing are my, are my own personal opinions. And they shouldn't be taken as necessarily as IMS opinions, uh, as representing IMS. So I guess there are many in this SIG lecture have this conversation continued. So what are your thoughts, how to continue this conversation? Um, so one, one thought is um, taking a closer, potentially, well, besides just other questions that people may have about the two specifications and whether or not the, um, you know, the more sort of the more global or universal one about whether or not convergence is is one, a good idea, two, a realistic proposition, three, does anyone uh, actually have an interest in, in working on that? Sh you know, sh short of that, um, are there, um, you know, is there interest, for example, in, um, in mapping, you know, in mapping exercises and crosswalking the two specs uh, uh, to understand um, how we might be able to um, provide a more common, you know, vocabulary. So that, for example, if we've done work uh, in a in an area like even a simple one, like we have a session profile with three actions: logged in, logged out, timed out. Nothing exciting there. On the other hand, you know, that those those terms um, and that and that profile as described, that might be good enough um, for um, you know the XAPI community. It just needs to be expressed. Some, somewhat differently. And perhaps there are ways in which we can, um, you know, we can cooperate um, and collaborate in that, in that space. And, you know, that's for you guys to tell me if you have you know, interest in that. I, I personally have a lot of interest in that, not that I'm talking for the group, but I think also there is a lot of opportunity around the profile server to act as a neutral space. Uh, I don't know if I'm the only one who can see that. So I think Megan uh, and uh, I'd love to do some offline discussion about that with you and Megan, uh, just as a brainstorm, uh, but that's kind of selfish because I'll be learning. Uh, um, it's a possibility, but do do you recall that, you know, from the IMS perspective, they would probably not want to host, uh, they would, they would if, if they had a concept of a server like that, they would probably want to host it within the boundaries of IMS. So there's that other, there's the other aspects of that too, right? You have different traject trajectories between the two projects, different histories. Um, at least now we're a little bit closer from a transparency standpoint. At least all you guys now can get to all our repos, even if on the, you know, like the ADL guys, for example, they can contribute directly because they're contributing members. Others who aren't members of IMS um, you know, other than suggesting issues or, or providing feedback or reporting back bugs and stuff um, at, at the present time can't, uh, you know, can't actually actively contribute um, to, um, re you know, repository and spec and code support. Um, uh, but still, um, at least we're a little closer there. But, you know, just that the mechanics of that infrastructure, um, that may not play out, but at least, you know, again, Possibilities, I think, in, in the area of vocabulary, um, as interesting ones. Anthony, I'm certainly willing to look at what you guys call your social profile as we start uh, expanding that concept for us uh, in the meetings that, that I'm going to be managing here over the next uh, several months. So I can I can certainly look at your profile as a as a template 
for you know some of the verbs and try to merge what you guys have with what Kirsty developed and uh, see if we can crosswalk there as we're sort of in the process of trying to formalize an actual social profile from our side. Um, so I think that might be a good like ha something happening right now that I can that I can try to do a crosswalk on. Yeah, that would be cool. That's one of our least developed ones. So it might be more that we uh, look to you guys to provide the template for, <laughs> for it actually. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, I think there, there are opportunities for conversations um, uh, and, and cooperation in, in this area. And then perhaps, you know, perhaps of course uh, in others as well. Okay, I'll, I can just email you directly about that. Okay, yeah, great. Uh, again, it's eight minutes after the hour. Um, Jesse, what do you want to do? Do you want to draw the call, the call to an end? Yeah, um, I guess this kind of cross talk between two communities is very good that we can learn from. Each one can learn from the other. And so um, is there anyone like to take initiative around this um, issue? like uh, in, uh, facilitate more of this um, crosstalk and also um, have this conversation continue? Uh, I'll take the whole, if that's okay with the group. Sure, sure. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, we should continue this conversation with Anthony the next meeting, if that's okay. And I, I'll try to get together uh, some boundaries for that. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I, I apologize a little bit for, you know, sort of like walking through some slides. I, I, I assume that um, not everyone is, is conversant with, um, with Caliper. That gives you some idea. And maybe before the next meeting um, that you hold, um, you can go and peruse our repositories, take a look at the spec, for example, and then come back and just pound me with, uh, with questions. And I certainly have questions um, that, you know, I'd like to pose to... Um, um, to you guys so that I better understand some aspects of, of XAPI and, and more particularly like where you guys are, are is headed over the next uh, six, nine, 12 months. Yeah, uh, I think your introduction is very helpful to help us understand and catch up on the status of IMS caliber. And, and can you provide the slide? Yeah, sure. I can also, um, this, this slide deck, um, I, I cut down, uh, I can juice it up and then make it available to you and um, you can have all the other slides uh, as okay. well. And 